Thank you very much, Dr. Val. So good afternoon, everyone. I will be presenting the key findings from the relevant study on healthcare quality, focusing on the nutrition care in Philippine public hospitals. So this study was conducted a response to the request of the DOH HFDB and in partnership with FNRI on select sections of the analysis. So I would like to thank my co-authors in this study, Jana Oy, Dr. Val Ulep, Dr. Imelda Agdepa, Angel Dr. Emelda Agdepa, Dr. Eva Goyena, Ma'am Josie Desnacido, and Ma'am Maylin Cajuco. So first, I will briefly run through the context, background, and methods of the study before the discussions on the key findings, conclusions, and recommendations. So just to note, uh, this discussion paper was published last December 2021, and we acknowledge that the DOH HFTB already took the initial steps to act on the recommendations we will be presenting on this paper, which they might expound more on later during the discussion. So next slide, please. Okay, so next slide. So first, uh, let us start with defining what is inpatient nutrition care. So inpatient nutrition care is a defined set of activities that enables the provision of patients' nutritional needs during hospitalization. So the goal is to maintain and improve health of the patients and stakeholders by providing high quality, safe, and nutritious foods at minimum cost. Quality nutrition care in hospitals is critical as this is when patients are in most need of good nutrition for their recovery. So poor dietary intake for inpatients that results in malnutrition can lead, of course, to longer recovery time, higher risk of complications, or worsening of patients' health during admission. Next slide, please. So in Philippine public hospitals, nutritional care is provided through the hospital's nutrition and dietetics service. So to, the, to support um, the public hospitals in achieving the goal of NDS, the DOH instituted a national policy, which is the Administrative Order 2016-0020, standardizing a minimum meal allowance of at least 150 pesos per patient per day and at least 1,800 calories for meals. In addition, standards are provided by the 2019 NDS Manual to monitor and evaluate the alignment of hospital NDS units to standards in areas such as staffing, food service processes, and outcomes monitoring. Next slide, please. So for this study, uh, this study examined whether Philippine public hospitals uh, complied to the minimum meal allowance as mandated by the policy after five years of implementation, provided inpatient meals with adequate nutritional content, and lastly, followed the minimum NDS structure and process standard stipulated in the NDS uh, management manual. So our conceptual framework uh, for this evaluation is based on the DOH policy adopted to a wider Donabidian framework for quality, similar to what uh, Dr. Val presented earlier. So this framework conveys that, is, that it is important to investigate the structures or minimum inputs necessary to the functioning of the hospital NDS. So um, service-capable NDS should be able to provide patients with meals of adequate quantity and nutritional content through the systematic processes that also ensure the food quality and uh, food safety. And then good patient outcomes are then uh, facilitated when patients consume the meals as intended and receive good nutrition during their hospital stay. So just to note, uh, we do not focus on evaluating nutritional outcomes um, as data on these indicators are sparse and very uh, difficult to collect. So we were only able to assess whether the hospitals have started uh, collecting any data related to patient nutritional outcomes. Next slide, please. So in partnership with the Department of Health, a self-administered survey tool in protected MS Excel format was rolled out to all public hospitals in the Philippines. So the questionnaire asked about the NDS structure, human resources, the status and challenges in the implementation of the policy, food service system processes, and hospital cycle menus. So the descriptive uh, analysis were generated using, using data by the PIDS study team and uh, the uh, nutrient adequacy analysis section of the paper uh, of the hospital cycle menus were generated using IDES by FNRI. Next slide, please. Okay, so to present uh, the key results, uh, first, for the sample characteristics, next slide, please. The final sample included 193 hospitals, of which 33% uh, are DOH-owned or DOH-retained hospitals, 10% are LGU-owned and um, LGU-owned level 2 and 3, sorry, and then 67% uh, are LGU-owned level 1 hospitals. So on average, uh, DOH-owned uh, hospitals are older and have higher bed capacities compared to LGU-1 
LGU level 1 hospitals. And majority of the level 3 hospitals in this sample are the OH owned hospitals. So uh, more than half or 68% of the included hospitals are located in the national capital region and Luzon. So we just want to uh, note that the results for the DOH retained hospitals are representative while those for the LGU owned hospitals are not. However, uh, we believe that the results are already revealing about what could be the state of the other hospitals. Next slide, please. So first, under um, financing, under the structures, uh, it is found uh, that the public hospitals are having difficulty meeting the minimum meal allowance of 150 pesos per patient per day. So only 51% of the hospitals met uh, the minimum meal allowance budget in 2021. So this study revealed that there is a slow compliance to the policy over the years. So before uh, the policy was instituted or in 2015, only 10% of the hospitals earmarked to the 150 pesos minimum meal allowance. And right after its implementation in 2016, compliance increased by only four percentage points. And now, five years after its implementation, compliance reached uh, 51%. And this improvement uh, in compliance mostly came from the DOH hospitals. And we can see that there is a large gap in the proportion of meeting uh, the budget between the DOH and LGU hospitals. So the top reasons reported why they were unable to comply were uh, first, there is a limited uh, budget in the NDS of hospitals, and there is a higher cost of commodities in the area. So also, um, um, majority or almost all of the hospitals perceive that the 150 minimum meal allowance is insufficient, and it needs to be updated to keep up with the current context. Next slide, please. Okay, so on governance or management under structures, this study revealed that the meal allowance is largely influenced by the hospital administration. So this means that the allotment of resources for the NDS will be largely influenced by the admin and their buy-in is important in lobbying for additional resources. And um, in terms of procurement, our responsibilities are decentralized in the NDS through the chief nutritionist dietitians. So um, this study, showed that the most used procurement mode is shopping at 62%, which may be uh, one of the reasons for the higher prices of food items. Inefficient planning of menus may be one reason why the hospitals result to uh, shopping or emergency pro procurement, of course, because if the menus are not planned well, there may be food items that need to be bought in emergency as it was not part of the pre-projected list of food items. Next slide, please. Okay, so on human resources for NDS under structures, uh, we found uh, that the public hospitals needs more uh, human resources specifically for NDS and opportunities for training. So uh, similar to the result earlier for the overall healthcare quality of hospitals, only half of the public hospitals met uh, the staffing pattern for NDS staff in which uh, LGU level two and three hospitals have the least uh, proportion meeting. So this may result in a higher number of meals to supervise per staff per working day. So we can see that in LGU level two and three hospitals, one nutritionist dietitian and one cook supervises 210 and 201 meals in a working day. So this is the highest compared to the OH and LGU level one hospitals. So what does this, what does this mean? So having a high workload may influence the working performance of the staff in which in turn may affect the quality of meals served in the hospital. So in terms of training among the NDS staff, only the nutritionist dietitians usually have the opportunities for training. And then the top reasons were, of course, the lack of budget and then the schedule conflicts with the current um, routinary work uh, in the nutrition and dietetic service. So uh, the opportunities for training are also important, not only to the nutritionist dietitians, but to chefs, to the chefs, to the cooks, and to the food service workers as well, because they are heavily involved in the delivery of quality meals, especially uh, in the meal preparation, considering food safety and quality measures. Next slide, please. Okay, so on the assessment of the quality of meals, uh, this study revealed that not all the hospitals were able to meet the prescribed nutritional content of planned meals, especially for the LGU hospitals. So only 40.2% of the hospitals met uh, the prescribed 1,800 energy requirement or 1,800 calories for uh, the regular adult uh, 
regular adult diet. So LGU level 2 and level 3 had the lowest compliance at 21.1%, while the DOH hospitals had the highest compliance at 44.1%. So this means that uh, the prescribed 1,800 calories under the policy uh, instituted by the DOH is not being met by half of the hospitals. So in terms of the micro macronutrient content, all the hospitals did not meet the acceptable distribution range for carbohydrates, protein, and fats. So nevertheless, um, there was a high compliance on protein requirement at 78.2%, while the lowest compliance was uh, at carbohydrates at 29.3%. And this pattern was similar across uh, all the different levels of government hospitals. And in terms of the micronutrients, the lowest average micronutrient content was generally observed among the LGU level two and three, while the DOH hospitals had the highest proportion meeting all the micronutrient recommendations. So the, pub the problematic micronutrients, which seemed to be the least met, were calcium, iron, riboflavin, and vitamin C. So since all levels of government hospitals have limited resources, they may be prioritizing meeting the macronutrient and energy requirement than mi micronutrients and uh, with a special uh, emphasis on protein, which is a very uh, important uh, macronutrient for recovery. So just to reiterate that the cycle menus or the planned menus were the... Uh, uh, menus evaluated, not the actual meals, because uh, weighing of actual meals served was not possible given the risk of conducting the data collection on site in hospitals. However, if the cycle menus or the planned meals were already short of nutritional content, as this study revealed, this may reflect that the situation is worse than when actual meals are to be evaluated. Next slide, please. Okay, so on assessment of patients for their uh, nutrition, nutrition status, uh, some hospitals does not have uh, the basic equipment uh, to be used. So only 33% uh, or one-third of the hospitals have both weighing scale and stadiometer. Thus, uh, some of the hospitals may not be well equipped to do regular nutrition assessments to patients. Regarding uh, the select food service process standards, the public hospitals in general were not able to adhere to the process standards. So first, um, on recipe standardization, 37% uh, of the hospitals have no standardized recipes, and this may reflect inconsistent amount of meals served. So inconsistent meal portions may lead to, again, emergency purchase of additional ingredients outside the projected quantities, which can contribute to the higher price of the food item because uh, when you uh, do this, the food items will be bought uh, in retail price. So the highest proportion, lacking standardized recipe, is coming from the LGU level 1 hospitals at 47%. Uh, so in ensuring uh, food quality, only 14% do all the three given standards. And uh, usually, the, hospital, uh, the hospital's miss is the food weighing of cooked food for portioning. So this is connected to the... Uh, lack of a standardized recipe. And since they are not able to weigh the food for portioning, um, we see that that may be due to the high quantity of meals to be, to be prepared. So they usually skip this process uh, to save time. So for food safety, almost all the hospitals do the given standard except for the use of the color-coded utensils. So the use of color-coded utensils is advised for the prevention of cross-contamination during meal preparation. However, only 36% uh, 36 of the hospitals in this sample does this. So again, all of these uh, may be rooted to the limited resources available for the NBS. Next slide, please. Okay, so in conclusion, I would like to summarize uh, this study. So our study found that the Philippine public hospitals need more resources for better structure and inputs to conduct the processes to achieving its objective. So the hospitals were unable to meet the minimum meal allowance per capita and the required nutritional content of planned meals. The hospitals need more human resources and learning and development uh, opportunities. The hospitals need to lobby to also to administration for resources. The hospitals need to have a procurement mode choice. Uh, I mean, the hospitals have a procurement mode choice that may have opted for higher uh, food item prices, unable to meet uh, food service process standards, and had monitoring and evaluation initiatives still in its infancy. So disaggregating by hospital type, uh, the most unequipped 
uh, hospitals or LGU-owned hospitals, which may also reflect a socioeconomic inequity in the provision of quality nutrition care. So these LGU hospitals are managed by LGU since the decentralization in 1991, and most of these hospitals have few resources, resulting to poorly equipped and poorly staffed facilities. So as a result, unequipped LGU hospitals catering the poor may be providing suboptimal quality nutrition care and this would not improve if not worsen the patient's uh, poor nutrition status at baseline. So last slide. Uh, thus, uh, we recommend first to uh, review the policy on standardized meal allowance or uh, the adjustment of the meal allowance budget. And the policy should consider the reasons why some hospitals were not able to meet it because increasing it plainly would not guarantee uh, the hospitals uh, meeting it because of uh, the budgetary constraints. Next, uh, the policy should also advocate to the hospital administration the importance of allocating resources to nutrition care, and this study revealed their influence in the NDS budget. So next, the policy should strictly enforce compliance to the updated nutritional requirements and food service processes. So another uh, recommendation is to capacitate the RNDs or the registered nutritionist dietitians on better and more efficient meal planning and procurement practices provide uh, learning and development interventions to other NDS staff, not just the nutritionist dietitians. Update of the new staffing pattern for NDS should be advocated to provide more plantilla positions for our NDS HR. And lastly, consider uh, the revision of the current monitoring tools for the NDS vis-a-vis -vis the standard set to strengthen our MNE initiatives and efforts. So that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much.